Hello. We stand on the brink of a huge phenomenon known as the Internet of Things, a dense network of sensors for capturing the environment. It has huge implications for the networks and for the cloud. Let's find out a bit more. Hello, give us a sense of the scale and scope of the Internet of Things now and in the future. Well, IoT is not a single field. It's essentially an ecosystem which consists of sensors, devices, it consists of a platform over and a connectivity over which they connect to the network. Then there are applications that are running on a platform, a particular platform, and then there's analytics around it, and all of this has to be secure. And then this wraps around in professional services. So essentially it's a very big or a very large ecosystem. In terms of volume, if I can tell you, uh, IDC predicts that by 2020, there'll be about nine billion of connected devices in Asia Pacific region. And it equates to an opportunity of almost 600 billion for enterprises in uh, the Asia Pacific region, which is huge. And it's not just for a consumer segment, it's for consumer, for enterprise, for government sector, for everybody. So there's a lot to play for everybody in this segment. What characteristics does a network need to cope with the Internet of Things? As we talk about Internet of Things, the, the network needs to be in an extremely distributed manner. And the problem we have, the challenge we have with the Internet of Things is people talk about things as just in a, in a very broad generality. But in, in reality, what we'll see as we progress is that the Internet of Things itself will fall into different categories. So there will be some of the entertainment things. Then there will be some life-threatening things which could be the car, for example. There could be some life-saving things, which would be the um, you know, devices in a hospital, right? Um, and then there would be others which are TVs and refrigerators and things like that. So the network has to be a lot more robust for certain kinds of things and a lot less robust. You don't care if your refrigerator fails. So uh, service providers will have to think about an extremely distributed heterogeneous type of network in order to be able to cater to the small amounts of data being con uh, exchanged between certain devices and some have extremely heavy intensive uh, data distribution at the back end. If we look at the very nature of the Internet of Things which would be smaller devices which require connectivity from remote areas into the network, typically reach is one of the things that we need to look at. Uh, low power access, because these devices typically will not have enough power to be able to uh, access high power networks. And then the ability to actually have uh, a rollout which is more economical uh, than a standard 3G, 4G kind of rollout which, uh, you know, which requires a significant number of towers and so on and so forth. So if you look at the, this kind of a scenario, that is typically what you look at for the last mile of uh, IoT network. I think there are uh, two or three main parameters and characteristics that we need to handle. Uh, one is the, the volumes of the devices that we are talking about, and which is less the in next three to four years we are talking about you know devices getting connected are almost like 20, uh, 25 billion. Now to handle such kinds of devices and their connectivity, we need to enhance the network capacity in terms of the bandwidth and also the reach. Now reach, the second part is reach. Uh, um, although. Uh, we are talking with this you know, huge number of devices, but mainly these devices are going to be internal devices, most of them. Like there are four categories of uh, you know, things that we are talking about, home devices, uh, the manufacturing industry is part of it, and the users. Uh, now these are the devices which are, if you are talking about uh, these devices sitting inside, then it is important that they, get, uh, they talk to the machine to machine you know, uh, communication which has got low packets of uh, data. And that that should be you know accessible to the network. Now this also needs uh, uh, some modifications to the network, where the network should be able to handle these low packets of data. Third is of course the device's battery, battery life that we're talking about, and uh, those are not going to be available very soon. So we need to address that issue as a parameter, uh, where the network elements have to you know communicate with the devices, consuming less amount of battery life. So that is where you know these challenges we'll have to address. What are the challenges involved in stress testing a network for the Internet of Things? One of the challenges in testing, stress testing um, in IoT is 
um, the fact that the devices are so spread out, right, and, and they're not concentrated in any one area in, in terms of millions of devices in one location, but there are billions of them, right? So it's the aggregation of the um, information and then testing it at the back end. But the second and bigger challenge, which I don't think will be addressed probably for a few years, is the peer-to-peer -peer communication between the devices. Um, it's just physically impossible to test all the combinations and permutations of these devices. That will be a long-term challenge. What are you going to do to make your networks ready for the Internet of Things? As of now, uh, it's in the evolution stage right now because we're talking about you know, two, two proprietary technologies right now, uh, like LoRa and, of course, Sigfox. Uh, but there's a third one which is going to come, which is called uh, cellular IoT, which is going to get released you know, after a while. It takes time there, uh, which will have you know, a larger impact. And people are waiting, and of course, uh, you know, most of the telecoms are waiting uh, on that front, uh, you know, instead of going full, uh, full hog, uh, primarily because the cost of, of implementation of uh, you know, proprietary uh, technology is slightly higher than it's going to be here. And also the protocols are getting devi uh, devised in a much larger scale, capturing much more you know, parameterized of the data. So possibly at this time there's evaluation going on. We'll also try and uh, learn a few things from, from the other operators, how things are moving. Uh, also we are, uh, we are analyzing uh, the, the, the new devices which are going to come, which are coming up. And first and foremost is trying to figure out which segment to target to start with. So these are the you know few things that uh, you know around which we are trying to uh, you know, evaluate the whole proposition for this IoT right now. And especially when uh, the government of India is talking about smart cities, uh, the smart city uh, you know basically demands in, uh, you know, in terms of India, it's a geographically very large country. So the the things that that government is you know expecting is mainly managing you know large sets of you know water management, waste management, public transport, parking lots. So everything is going to be in a you know, very, very large scale. You know, unless we get uh, you know, a clear direction on the protocols, it's going to be very, very tough. So that is going to be a driver on, on, on one side of it for us. Uh, that is primarily the thing which is going to happen first than any other you know, small stuff that we're talking about. We have actually rolled out the LP WAN based uh, solution, which is using LoRa technology in three cities now in India. We're piloting it in Delhi, Mumbai, and Bangalore. Uh, this came out as an innovation project that we were doing inside Tata Communications. And what we are actually doing is we are being able to connect devices, uh, things, uh, the internet, using this network across various uh, you know, cities and then take it out to millions of people uh, in the country as it progresses. How do you see the future of the Internet of Things from a network perspective? Well, the future of uh, IoT from a network perspective is bright, but the networks will need to be ready. We're talking about 9 billion new connections here, and which, which talks about the fact the service providers will need to be ready for it, and the sensors uh, will have a very low compute power and will have low battery. So the networks will have to be cautious not to be sucking anything out of these. Otherwise, it will mean that this, this system doesn't really work properly. And the telcos are really working on this. They are currently going through their trials. They are into beta uh, phase for a lot of new products. So it's, it's essentially telcos are getting ready for it. And as we go down the future, I think the future is very bright for IoT. Thank you.